Today's video on a Mark II Focus ST engine build. So this is the 2.5 litre five cylinder engine that's found in the Mark II Focus ST, Mark II Focus RS and quite a few Volvo models. We're rebuilding this today as the garage that fitted the block mod shims fitted some really poor quality mild steel um, shims that then corroded and blew the head gasket. It was a right mess. So we've now got fresh block. We've got the Westwood ductile steel liners fitted to this. This car is being built in preparation of a lot of track days. So we'll run you through what we're doing. We've got the GoPro set up. We'll do some time lapses and what goes into it. And we'll jump in and out and explain what we're doing and why. We've now got all the crank bearings in. So they are the main crank bearings that support the crank. So the crank floats on oil in between them in both the girdle setup and the bottom of the block. The crank itself is just over here. So we've had this all balanced as per, as most our builds do now. So this has been all balanced. You can see some of the balancer marks here, um, along with the rods and pistons. The pistons were absolutely bang on, bang on. So uh, yeah, nice one from Mar and them. The rods were also balanced and we are just gonna drop the crank in now. Next up is the rods and pistons to be assembled. So like we said, we've got the K1 connecting rods and we've got the Marmot Sport Pistons to go in this. These are stock bore, so 83 millimeter. First step is to get the rod and the piston together. So we've got one assembled here. It's a case of lubing up the Gudrun pin, getting one clip in, sliding it onto the rod and getting another clip in. Uh, and then once they're on, we'll get the piston rings onto the piston itself. They've already been pre-gapped, as you can see, they're all labeled up there. And that is just using the special tool, being very careful not to damage them, not to snap them. And then we should be in a position to get them in the engine. We now have basically a complete built bottom end now. So the rods and pistons are all assembled and they've been um, fitted into the engine block. The girdle setup has been um, bolted down with a brand new mains bolts. All the bearings are in. Um, like I said, the bearing clearances were all checked and measured. This is just final assembly at this point. Pistons are all in and fitted and looking sweet. Brand new genuine Ford oil pump to go on next and the sump. Uh, cylinder head next and then on to ancillaries. So we'll get the rest of this probably built up today.
that's the fully assembled long block now then so the cylinder heads all bolted down it's this is running one of our ported cylinder heads um, with the newman stage one cams the top covers all bolted down with a special red sealant and um, we have got fresh oil pump on sumps all on uh, we're now basically on ancillaries time the engine up and not a million miles off it coming off the stand here we are ready to come off the stand then so this is as far as it's worth going uh, with it on the stand the rest is just as easy to put on in the car so all timed up brand new water camber water pump kit on it is on ac compressors on all the foot housings on knock sensors are on the lower inlet manifold the turbos on so this is a stage 2 rs hybrid um, it did make 440 on the previous engine so Hopefully we'll make a little bit more on this with some fresh compressions, some cams, port head. Um, yeah, basically we're ready to come off the stand now. Clutch and flywheel bolted on, gearbox on, should put it in the car. Right, so we fast forwarded a bit now. We are got the engine back in now, so it's all in, on all the mounts. We've got all the wiring looms on. We sprayed the gearbox cold also, it looks wicked. Um, all the shifter mechanisms back on there. Most of the stuff around the back is done and underneath. And it's just doing a CV boot on it as well because that was split, but we should have this up and running tomorrow now. now all ran in so we did it on the dyno same as all the other ones we do um, we just dropped the oil check the filter we're all leak free uh, sounding sweet so we switch it from the running in oil to the Miller's nano drive now and then we've just got a couple of little bits to tidy up and we can get it on for tuning nice clean oil filter what would expect Another part of this build we're doing for John on his Mark II ST is a full rear subframe restoration. So it's pretty old, it's pretty rusty, like most Mark IIs now. So we've removed it all. We've had to cut the camera bolts off as per. It's, the heads are still stuck in the subframe. I've got to grind those out yet. Yeah. Uh, we've got new bolts everywhere, new bushes everywhere, half flex to go on. He's already got his white line rear anti roll bar. If we come over here, new upper and lower arms, spring perches, half flex black bushes to go everywhere. Ready for some track days in the new year. So the lads have been on this for a couple days, it's all been painted. Every single bush has been replaced for a power flex black series now. So it's gonna be tight on this rear end. It's all been painted. Everything is, pr pretty much everything is new by the subframe itself. New bolts, new camera bolts, new drop links. It's got the white line anti-roll bar on it already. Everything's been power flex blacked, as I say. Yeah, ready to go back in now. So today's the day. We've got it on the dyno, she's strapped down. James is just loaded on the base file. So we've got the injectors calibrated in. We've just got wastegate duty pressure. Um, we're just going to run it, make sure everything's sweet, and then we'll start up in the boost levels. So she's all strapped down, ready to rock. Okay, so we're done tuning now. We finished up at 1.9 bar boost peak. It then tails off to about 1.4, 1.5 at the red line. 
Uh, we're pretty happy with the power. We've struggled with a bit of knock. Uh, we suspect it's probably still got some old fuel in it. It's, it's been sat around for probably nearly 12 months now. Um, so we suspect there's just a bit of crap fuel. It's had a jerry can of good fuel in, but we're gonna, customer's just gonna bring it back after a thousand miles and we'll double check it and see where we're at, see if it will take a bit more ignition time in. But we're still pretty happy where it finished. It's still finished up at 442 horsepower. So 442 horsepower. 470, 480 foot pound of torque, so we are pretty pleased with that. Final piece of the puzzle on this uh, build that we're doing then is an oil cooler setup. So, John does a lot of track days in this car and he asked us to put a big old oil cooler on it. So, we've got this huge 14 row, 592 mil wide uh, oil cooler that we're just space the intercooler down a bit and it fits perfectly on top. So we're just gonna get that mounted, get some uh, hoses and fittings. We've then got a thermostatic um, takeoff plate for, to go around the back. And uh, yeah, that'll do the job of keeping it cool on uh, many planned track days. Just been and collected the fittings we need for this oil cooler setup. So we're running proper AN fittings, dash 10 hose and the Mokul um, take off at the back so it's got a thermostat built in for 80 degrees so it won't actually open um, so this huge cooler won't actually get any flow until it until it needs it basically that's the oil cooler kit all done then so we've made a little bracket there tidied it all up it's been uh, run up the temp oil cooler's nice and warm so that is job done. Get the bumper back on this and back to the owner. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for a build similar to this, same as this, or even bigger than this, drop us a message, um, email, Facebook, WhatsApp. But thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with some more videos.